morning and welcome to Children's Chapel from St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. We welcome you on Sunday, July 5th. I'm Miss Sarah. I'm Ruthie and I'm 10 years old. And I'm Alden and I just turned eight a week ago. <laughs> We're so glad you could join us today. Now please join us for our welcoming statement. Ready guys? We welcome God the Creator. We greet God the Redeemer. We bless God the Sanctifier. Good morning and welcome to Children's Chapel. I'm Mr. Robert and this is Becca and Andrew. And today we're making our holy space. So we took one of our tables, we put a nice tablecloth down, but whatever you have in your house you can use. And we grabbed a couple candles for our candles that we always light every Sunday at Children's Chapel. We also have our Bible in case we need to read some of it. But let's start today off with the words that we always say. Ready? The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks and praise. And praise. Now, let's light our candles back up. Let's worship together. Ready, Andrew? One, two, go. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Dance break. caring, and loving. We ask for safety, help, and respect. We ask for safety, help, and respect. So that we have a better life and love to share. So that we have a better life and love to share. Amen. Amen. Children's Chapel, today we're going to sing a song called Let Your Light So Shine. So we're going to have our light. You can put up your light whenever we sing about light. And then the second part of the song is, let your love grow. So you can put up your love, too, whenever we sing about love, okay? Let's sing our song together. I think you'll like it as you get, get to know it. Ready? Oh, one, two, and let your light so shine, I tell you. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hey guys. Sometimes when I do a story for Children's Chapel, I like to kind of have some fun with it or you know, maybe we make some jokes or do something a little bit silly to learn about something. But today's a little bit different, and, and so I just, I thought maybe we could just talk today. See, this passage that we heard in the gospel, it's kind of, it's a really big deal, and, and it calls on us, it asks us to do something really big, and I want to make sure that we really think about it and understand it together, because it's something that maybe you'll have to think about often and a lot over the course of your whole life. I know I do. So this whole idea that Jesus is talking about is to love your enemies. So what I really want to talk about is love. Because we, we kind of know, right, what love feels like. And when love feels good, oh, isn't it the best thing in the world? A warm hug or a nice thing somebody does for you or a, a gift or a favor. I mean, all of those things are wonderful ways to feel and experience love. And they are amazing. But all of those things, they don't really apply necessarily when it comes to our enemies, right? I mean, if we think about enemies, it's it's probably someone who's maybe hurt us or made us feel sad or made us feel like maybe we aren't all that we know we are. And so enemies are complicated. But in this passage, Jesus says to love them. And then, and then he goes on and gives us some good advice. So I want to talk about what else love can mean besides just a feeling. Because some of those things that I mentioned they're actions. Love is action sometimes too. So, so what's an action that Jesus recommends right away? As soon as he says it, it's like he has to tell us what to do right away because he knows that it's really complicated. So he says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Persecute means kind of the people who've been unkind to you. Pray for those people that have been unkind to you. And so Loving your enemies is an action, and one of those actions is to pray. We have to pray for people who are unkind, people who are our enemies, who have set themselves in our lives as enemies because they haven't known how to be kind, or they have been cruel, or they've made terrible mistakes that we just don't really know what to do with. And so sometimes those things are really so enormous that it kind of puts people in that feeling of, of maybe being an enemy. And so we have to pray for them. We have to pray for God to be in their hearts and to help them see a new way of living and being so that we can know that, um, that we have helped by praying for them. And in the midst of that too, we can also pray for ourselves to have the strength and courage to keep praying for somebody who is an enemy in our lives. Another action we can take is to help our enemies get help. Because sometimes when someone is doing something very, very wrong, they don't always necessarily understand that that's what they're doing. And so another action we can take to love our enemies is to help them get help. And for us, that usually means telling a grown-up, going to someone that you would really trust and saying something bad is happening and it's not going well and I need help. 
And when you ask for help, then that grown-up can help that other person too. So it really helps everyone if we involve someone we trust and get some help with helping them. The third thing that sometimes we have to do, which is really kind of complicated, but I know that other people in your life can help you think about these things too, is sometimes when someone has been unkind or uh, hasn't done all that they could do to sort of be uh, who they know they need to be, who God has made them to be, sometimes when we make mistakes like that, there have to be consequences. And one of the consequences of that sometimes is that it's not okay and not uh, safe for a while for us to be friends with that person. That sometimes a consequence has to be that, you know what, I, I don't feel good in this relationship. It doesn't, feel, um, it doesn't feel loving to me, like how God would want us to be with each other. And so for, for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to have the consequence for you of not being in a friendship with you. It's really hard. It's a really hard thing for us to try and do, but it is one of the most important things we can do. It's called setting a boundary. And I know that sounds weird, like, shouldn't you have no boundaries if you love someone? No, absolutely not. It's the opposite. People have to know what our boundaries are so they can know best how to love us. And so when we tell someone that that's really important, that you honor their boundaries uh, and that they honor your boundaries, that's an important way for, for you to love other people as well. And, um, and sometimes consequences help us learn, don't they? Even when they're hard, they help us learn what to do and what not to do. And so you too can set those boundaries with others. Like I said, it's complicated. This is a big passage and a really big thought. To love your enemies is a really, really big thing. So I want you to do your best to, you know, maybe talk to your parents or your grandparents or other grown-up friends that you love and trust to say, how do you do it? How do you love your enemies? How do you pray for those who persecute you? Um, how, how do you go forth in the world um, knowing that sometimes it's really hard? How do you set consequences? And, and how do you get help getting them help? I think sometimes that can really help to have important conversations like that. And, and since this is just a really big idea that Jesus is trying to teach us, I thought we should really just have that time to talk with each other and, and just kind of be able to say to each other, right, this is big, this is hard, and we need to learn how to do it together. So know that um, you've got it and that we're here for you, and that the community of your church loves you so much and, and is here for you as you learn how to do these hard, complicated things that Jesus puts before us. Jesus only puts them before us because he knows we can do it. Even when it's hard, and even if we don't get it all right on the first try, Jesus is with us and believes in us and sees us. And Jesus believes in and sees you, and Jesus loves you very, very much. Let's get ready for our prayers by singing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us power. Send us love, send us grace. It's time for the prayers of the people. For we rocks are heavy on us, so they are very sad. So this is an example. I'm sad that my grandpa isn't doing well. And the mango, you say, it's a happy thing on us. So you say, hmm, I'm happy that um, the other week I saw my first ice cream truck. We, ha we have two special materials. Rocks that are striped from a black sand beach right here in Jamaica. And some freshly picked mangoes from our mango trees. You can have all sorts of materials you want, like pipe cleaners or glue sticks. It's up to you. And everyone in your family should have a turn putting
putting the things in there and sharing what is hard on them and what makes you happy. Now it's time for our children's creed. Repeat after me to state what we believe in. We believe in God above. We believe in God above. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe God's spirit too. We believe God's spirit too. Comes to show us what to do. Comes to show us what to do. We believe that we can be. We believe that we can be. Kind and gentle, Lord like thee. Kind and gentle, Lord like thee. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Alden. Yeah, you should send a text to your friends and family. Yeah, that would be nice. Peace. <laughs> Good morning. Today we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. You probably already know this song, but we're going to do it with some motions, too. So do, do the motions and sing along with us as we go through it. So here's the motions. Becca, are you ready? Andrew, are you ready? It goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Let me sing. Yes, Jesus loves me. Good. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You guys do the motions and sing along with me, okay? Here we go. Everybody sing along with us at home. One, two, three. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones joining us today for Children's Chapel, let's say the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll do our closing song, Go Now in Peace. Ready? Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Change our life. Let's sing Go Now in Peace. Ready? joining us on Children's Chapel today. We hope to see you next time. Yeah, and let's share love and praise God next time. See you later. Bye-bye.